Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, I've got something pretty exciting to share with you. We're working on our Battle Royale series, and today we're going to be building our tactical markers. So we're going to be doing two things today. The first is kind of small, but you'll notice I now have a cursor or a crosshair in the center of my screen. And the other thing we're going to be doing is creating our tactical markers. So the idea here is that I'll be playing my Battle Royale game, and I'll be sneaking up on an enemy camp here with my friend, and say I notice an enemy on that hill. Well, then I can look at the spot and hit the T key and watch what happens in my minimap. You'll see this icon appear and this little tactical ping, kind of like a radar effect goes off. And anytime I hit the T key, that marker will change. It'll change position to exactly where I'm pointing and it will play that animation once. So today we're gonna to do that together so you can point anywhere you like as many times as you hit T. Another important thing, the T is for tactical or for target. You know, we're making a target on the map. The object will stay there and it will only show up on the minimap. It does not show up in the real world here. And you'll notice that if I place one and then I place one again quickly, it will automatically interrupt the old one because it actually deletes the object. And then we're gonna build a new object in its place. So we just build another object exactly where we're pointing. So you can still do your call outs with the directions above. I can say straight south. There's an enemy right there, or I can mark something for myself, and the radar ping is to kind of draw attention to the minimap so that we can see that. Okay, so enough of that. Let's jump in and figure out how we do this. So you'll notice that I'm using the similar trick to do our character uh, marker on the minimap. So this is a minimap icon. This is a prefab that I created. I'll show you how to create this, but we're gonna create a separate version which is for the tactical marker. Okay, so to make this work, we need a couple things. We need two materials, we need a prefab, and we need a little bit of scripting, all right? So let me bring over my notes here, here we go. And let's go ahead and recreate this together, all right? So let's create a new game object. I'm just gonna create an empty object, and I'm gonna call this tutorial, so toot, tactical marker. Okay, there he is. And I'm gonna put him at the origin, so at zero, zero, zero. So let's zoom in on him, there he is. He's nothing right now, right? So now let's create a child object for him. I'm gonna create an object, actually right here, I can go create 3D object and a plane. There we go, so I've created a plane, and just a simple 3D plane, nothing special to it. So let's go ahead and call this icon, all right? Again, I'm gonna click on the tactical marker, right click, uh, 3D object, I'm gonna create one more plane, there we are, and this one we're gonna call ping, all right? Now for each of these, we can go ahead and turn off the mesh collider. We don't care about them actually colliding with things in the world. For the ping, I am gonna put it a little bit above. So I'm gonna put this at 0.15. So it's gonna be just a little bit above just to make sure that physically when it's drawn in that, in that way, that we actually see it like that. Okay, so that's really it for the creation of it. Now we just need our two materials. So I've already created those, but I will show them to you and how it works. So I have a couple of materials here. The first is called BRS underscore tactical marker. So this is just using a built-in Unity material object that's for the UI. So if I go to my icon layer and I'm just gonna apply that. There we go, and you won't see it yet because the other one's on top of it. But for the ping, we have another one, so that's gonna be this guy, and I'll drag that over, and there we go. So this is what they look like, and it's a little hard to see right now because they are sort of um, in shadow because of the way we built this. So let me bring out our prefab and we'll take a look at that one so you can see it a little bit easier. There he is. So you can see how they're kind of glowing. And here, so here's the one I made and here's the one we're making together. You can see that they're completely identical. Let me look at our materials. Are these emissive? They are not. Okay, so I have no idea why mine is glowing and yours down here is not, but take, take for truth that these are identical objects here. Okay, so to create these two materials, let's go ahead and talk about that. We'll go to the materials. And the first one is using the knob object. So if you create a new material, so let's do this right click, create new material. Uh, materials are down here, right there, material. So let's call this toot uh, icon, okay? So I'm gonna change the rendering mode to say cutout, all right? And I'm gonna change the cutout alpha, I think I have this, yeah, 0.05 actually. So way down here, very, very subtle. Just like that, point. Oh, five. There we go. Then right here, you click this little button right next to the albedo and you get to pick a texture. And we're going to use one that's part of the Unity UI canvas thing called Knob right there. And you notice now he looks just like my other one. And what the cutout does is it says anything that's beyond that 
cut it out. We don't want to see the rest of it. We just want this kind of floating by itself. That way we just get the icon and we don't get any kind of excess around it. And that's all you have to do for that material. So now for our other material, let's right click. I'm going to say create material and we'll say toot ping. Okay. Now this one, I'm going to provide you with the actual texture. So let's go to our textures and you'll see that there is this BRS tactical ping. And if we look at it here, all it is, is it's just a, a circle, really. It's just a ring. But note, when you import the texture, when you bring it into the editor here, it will look all funky here at first. You need to select it like this, and then here in the inspector, change it to Sprite 2D and UI. And what I did also is down here under compression, I set it to none, and then click apply. And what that will do is this ring is just a ring, but you notice that the checkerboard behind it, we want the rest of that to be cut out because we want it to look just like this. We want just the ring. Okay. So make sure you set those two set settings there, the Sprite 2D and UI and change your compression to none. Then it'll look just like this. So now if we go back to our object here, we have the icon is all set. So we're using that. And then for the ping, let's go ahead and create that. So if I go back to our material, so we have tutorial ping, there he is. Same thing, we're gonna set this to cut out, all right? But for the albedo, we're gonna choose our, our ring here. So mine's called BRS underscore, and there we go, we can see it right there. There he is. And as soon as I select that, it'll look like these two weird lines, but it's because we're looking kind of down at it on, it's being cast onto a sphere here, that's why it looks so weird. But as soon as that's all set up, you're good to go. So go to our ping object, let's make sure we're using that. So I'll put that one on there and go to our icon and make sure that we're using the icon one. And there we go, they're identical now. Perfect, so that's all you have to do for these guys. Now, for the ping, we are gonna animate it, okay? So let me move this marker over here a little bit and let's move our marker up a little bit so we can see it here. Again, this one is strangely in shadow and I'm not quite sure why, but this is what it should look like, but we will refer to both. So now, to make the actual ping kind of like expand out like you saw it, we're gonna animate it. So what I'm gonna do is select ping, and then I'm gonna to go to the animator. Actually, no, pardon me. I'm gonna to go to select the ping, and I'm gonna go down here to animation. So the animation window, not animator, but animation, pardon me. You can also get to it by going to window, and it's control six, animation, and that will give you this. You'll notice here you'll get this create button. So I'm going to click that and I need to call it something. So I'm going to put, put it here and I'm going to call this tutorial ping. Okay. So now we have our timeline and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some properties. So the first property I want to add is the transform the scale because we're going to actually expand its scale. Then I'm also going to add another property of the mesh renderer. Okay. I'm going to open this up now. Look at this. Isn't this crazy? We're going to add one for the color. Okay. There we go. And if you expand color, you'll notice that we do get RGB and A. So we can actually fade this thing out over time. That's what we want to do. So I'm going to go to the one, bring the final thing all the way out here to 150. So let's go all the way out here, 150. There we go, 150. So let's go all the way out to 150 and let's create a key, add a key at that point, okay? So we have three keys now. We have a key at zero. We have a key at one because that's where it started us off. And then we have a key at 150. So we don't really want to do much or change much until we get to the one and beyond. But we are going to change the scale the entire time. So let's go here to the scale and make sure that our scale, we're going to scale it in the X and Z, not in the Y. It doesn't really make sense for a flat object. So here we're all set. We don't really need to change anything. Let's go all the way to the end. And by 150, we do want to change some scaling. So I'm going to change this by two and then hit this little guy and just ignore him. And then say two and hit this little guy and just ignore him. And now you can see as I, as I move this back and forth, that will scale up the entire time. Pretty cool. Now, starting at the one here, since we have our marker already for the colors, we're going to go from one to 150 is where we're going to change the colors. So for the colors, we're gonna to go to, we can do alpha, we can just say zero alpha by the time you get to the end. And now if you drag this over, you'll see that that works okay, but it's actually the alpha of the cutoff. But we wanna fade the color as well. 
So let's go to the end here, and all we do for that is just change the, the amounts in the RGB. This is from zero to one, so really think of one as being 255, 256. So instead, I'm gonna change this to zero, zero, zero at the end. Let's change this to zero, enter. Again, I'm gonna click that. Zero, enter, click that. And then zero, enter, click that. So now, if I scale back and forth, you'll notice that it fades out very nicely. Just fades away. So that's it, our animation is all set for our tactical ping. Everything's working nicely, we're gonna bring that all back here, there we go. And the animation's already saved and nothing happens for the first second. So it'll just appear and then we're gonna start to do all of this at the end. Now you notice that I said nothing happens, we really need to have the scale moving the whole time. So what we can do is just select the scale keys from this point and delete them from right here. So now you'll notice that it's starting to work there, I just have to delete all the scale keys, so. Let's see, let's get rid of all the scale keys. There we go. So now it will start to only fade the color starting at one. However, if I scroll all the way to the beginning, it will be scaling the entire time. So that's what we want. We want the ping effect to be happening the whole time. And then just when it gets to the last, say half of its life here, we'll fade out the color. Perfect, okay, so that guy's all set. And if I select my other ping here, you'll see I have all the same things, zero, one, 150, and as we slide it over, you'll see the effect here. You see here, the color starts to fade, and then the alpha cutoff kind of catches up. There we go, ping. So if we hit the play button here, we can actually see that in effect. So you can see that happen and go, perfect. And if we select our other guy here and hit play, you'll see the same effect happening over here. Again, it's a little different because for some reason this guy is in shadow, I'm not quite sure why. All right, so these guys are all set. Now, to turn this into an object that we can use over and over again. Let's go to our project, and we're gonna go into the prefabs folder, and we'll just select this guy and drag and drop him into here. And now he's a preset, as you can see there, the colors match my other one, so everything should be all set there. Exactly the same thing, perfect. All right, so we will delete both of these guys from the world, because we can't have them in the world when we're actually using our code, but so now we wanna add some code, and what we need to do is we need to take our character here and take a look at the direction that the camera is looking, and we need to draw a line out from that because that's what we're doing is we're saying, wherever you're looking, that's where I wanna put this thing. And then when you hit the button again, I'm gonna say, hey, if there already is one in the world, let's get rid of it, and let's put another one in its place. All right, so for that, we're gonna create a script so if we go into our scripts folder, you'll notice I've already created one, and it is called BRS, all capitals, underscore, tactical marker. So the first T in tactical and the M in marker are both capitalized. But if you do it just like that, and then follow along with the script that I'm gonna read it through you and explain it to you, but I'll provide it for download, so don't worry, you don't actually have to type it all. But this is the script that we're going to apply, and you're gonna put this script on your FPS controller, okay? not on the first person character itself, but on the FPS controller, okay? So let's take a look at the script. Here it is, it's nothing fancy, it's 54 lines of code if you count all these spaces and things, okay? Not difficult at all, I'm gonna walk you through it right now. <clears throat> Pardon me. So in the beginning we have a public game object for tactical marker. So what this is, is if you look at our code here, there's actually a little public thing here that we can drag and drop something in. And what we're gonna drag and drop in is our prefab. So if we see here, we have the script applied and I'm gonna take our prefab here and I'm gonna drag and drop and you see that you can add something right there. Boom, there we go. So now the script knows, hey, what is this thing I'm supposed to grab? There we go. Then we have a couple of private things here. We have a private float for marker offset. We'll get to that in a moment. Private camera for the actual first person camera. Private float for the minimap height. We're gonna do that automatically a private ray for our ray casting, a ray cast hit for what we're hitting, and then a string called marker ID. So this is the actual name or the ID of the marker that we've created in the world. So in the beginning, in the start function here, we're gonna say set our camera equal to find in our children anything that is a camera. So since we're here, we're gonna look through our children and go, okay, where's their camera? Oh, there's only one camera and it's right here on the first person character. Okay, so that's the camera it's gonna find. Perfect, so we found that camera. Okay, then I'm gonna say this value of minimap cam height is a float value, which is equal to gameobject.find, so find a game object in the world, 
that is called minimap camera get its transform position y. So get how high off the ground this thing called minimap camera is. So if we go under UI, there is our minimap camera, and it is currently at a height of 1100. Doesn't really matter because it's an orthographic camera, but the important thing is these have to exist just below the minimap camera so that we actually see them on the minimap. So if we do marker offset equals minimap cam height minus, I put in 10F. 10, 10 float. So it's just a little bit below the camera. That way these things, since they're planes, they're only visible from one side, so they're going to be way up in the sky, way higher than you can ever get. So from below, even if you look at the sky, you'll never see them. Okay? Pretty clever, right? So we're going to set it equal to that height minus 10. So we're just going to bring it just below. Okay. So now, in the update, all we're doing is looking for you to press the T key. So if input dot get key up, key code T. So if you press the T key, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to call this function called place marker. So here in place marker, we're going to do a couple things. Our ray is going to be equal to a new ray. So we're going to cast a ray. We're going to shoot a beam forward. Okay. We're going to shoot it forward from our first person camera, which is the camera we found in the beginning. It's transform.position. So we're going to start wherever it is. And where are we going to shoot it? We're going to shoot it towards its transform dot forward. So wherever the camera is looking, we're going to shoot a beam. Okay. Then we're going to say, Hey, if we happen to hit something, we're going to get a marker location is going to be equal to the point at which we hit both X and Z, but then our marker offset is going to be our Y. So we're going to say you hit the ground at this point, but now go up in the air, this amount, this marker offset, which remember up here, that's equal to just 10 float below the minimap. So it's going to go hit the ground and then go shooting up in the sky, but not quite as high as the minimap. And the idea there again is you can't see it from below, but we can see it from the minimap camera down. And then we're going to say if the marker ID is none, which it is when we start, then we're going to go ahead and create this thing. So we've got the point at which we're going to create it. Now we're going to go ahead and create it. So game object marker is equal to instantiate. So instantiate is we're taking that prefab we made in like a cookie cutter. We're going to put one in the world wherever we tell it to. So we're going to tell it to get our tactical marker, which again up here is that public thing that we dragged over, right? So make a copy of this and put it here, which is the point that we've just defined. And it's quaternia.identify just means don't bother rotating it. Okay. So then we're going to say marker ID is now equal to the name of the thing we just made. So now that means marker ID is no longer none. So if we hit T again, it's going to come through here and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. We've got the point at which you want me to put this thing, but there's already a marker ID. So what do I do? Well, I come down here and I say, you know what? Let's find the object that is the marker ID and let's destroy it. We're going to destroy the old one. And then you notice this is the same code from up here. We're just going to say, yo, create another one. Okay. And then the thing you just created, name it marker ID. So that way, every time I hit T, I can say, only if it's the first time I've ever created a marker, are we going to go through here and say, let's create one and let's call it this and let's override this marker ID none to something else. Every other time you do it, it's going to already have a name. So it's going to fall into this else and say, yo, one already exists. So go ahead and find it, destroy it, make a new one at the new location. Okay. Nice and easy. It's really not that hard. And again, I'll provide the code for you. You can just connect it up and it will work. So for that, remember, all you have to do is for your FPS controller. And again, if you're doing third person, whatever, then it would be on your third person controller. You're going to attach this script. So you just drag it and drop it right here. Then you'll have this open spot here for tactical marker. And that's going to be the thing that we created together here. Again, you just drag and drop it over there. See, I can drop one in the world, but instead I'm going to drop it right there. There we go. Okay. So now one more thing before we test it and look at it, we'll explain it one last time is let's go ahead and create our cursor so we can see where we're looking. It's really simple. So under the canvas, all I did was I right clicked and said, uh, UI raw image. Okay. And that gave me this raw image, which is going to be for the screen. Uh, let's see why is he, it looks totally white, which is really weird. But if I go to the game view, we can see him there and I will provide this, uh, texture as well for you. So let's go here to textures and here's the cursor. Again, we need to make sure that when you import it, you go here to the inspector for it and say sprite 2D and UI, 
set that. And then down here, set the compression to none. And you'll see it's a crosshair, okay? So we go to my cursor. All you do is just drag and drop that right here. And he's all set. Now he is a 64 by 64 texture. So for the width and height here, I just changed those to be 64 by 64 to make sure it matches. I didn't change anything else. So he's exactly the center of the screen, which is gonna be the center of where the camera is looking. All right? So with that, we're all set. So let's go ahead and hit play. And let's run around and play with our tactical marker. So now, anytime I hit T, it's gonna shoot a beam right to where I'm looking and it's gonna spawn this object. And this object is technically way up in the sky. If you look up, I can't see it. But if I pause and let's go to the scene view, and you'll see that there's one above me for the marker for where the player is on the mini map. And you'll never see that either because you're looking at it from below. But if we select this guy and say, find it, here he is way up in the sky. Okay? He's way up above us. See, we're way down there. So here he is just kind of floating, hanging out right below the mini map camera. So that way it gets drawn, but then there's no possibility that you'll ever run into it. So that was kind of the idea. So let me click to go back into the world here. Now, anytime I click T, we're just kind of generate new ones. And again, it doesn't matter if the animation is being played. It's the moment I hit T, it puts a new one. So I can kind of rapidly hit it like this. And you'll see it's changing every time I hit the T key. And it just starts the animation over again. And I will only play once. And I can run underneath of it. I should probably put that so that the player moves up to maybe say less than five. So then the player icon is always on top of it. But this way you can mark things. So the idea is over here, if I run over here, there's some, there's some stone right here sticking out of the ground. So say that I see a building here and I say, oh, the enemy ran around to the left of the building right by that stone. I can mark it exactly on the mini map. There you go. See, this is the stone here. And then it goes up to that hill. So you can be very precise about where things are happening. And this is a little different from the way it works in say PUBG. You have to actually go to your map and then right click and place the icon here. I'm in the middle of, you know, shooting at bad guys and I can say, I need help, I need help where? Right there, I need help right there, you know? So you can actually point as you're playing, you don't have to stop anything that you're doing. So I wanted to both create this effect for you guys, but then improve on it a little bit. So that way we make sure that we don't break the action. We can just say, let's go ahead and press it. And there we go. So that's what I got for you guys this week. I hope you have enjoyed. I know a lot of you've been asking for some of the other mechanics like the circle. And the circle is coming. We are almost done with it. I'm pretty sure it'll be for next week's video. We're working really hard for that, guys. So that will be coming up shortly. We'll have all kinds of settings and everything for you guys. And of course, a full tutorial, scripts and all. No worries. We're, we're going to take care of you. So uh, thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you guys for all of the subs and all of the comments. It's wonderful. And keep it coming. We're going to keep rolling with this. And we'll keep going. And we'll keep making a great game together. So until next time, guys, keep practicing. Get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.